Hello everybody, welcome to a new video, Jane Speed Shop. So, new video about the project, s 24 v Turbo Project. If you're new to the channel, have a look in the right corner for you, it's my logo. You can all see the new bits, or the last bits about this project, s 24 v An M113, M113 V8 engine, a little bit dark in here. Turbocharger on one side. So if you're new, have a look in the right corner for the last video uh, about this project. There was a lot of stuff in the engine bay. So today, in this video, uh, I'm planning three things. Um, I think it's more than four weeks ago that I made a video. I was a little bit busy. So I want to do some things on the car. Um, so what I'm going to do, the prop shaft needs to go underneath the car. Um, center bearing needs to be renewed, this one is completely broken off uh, and I have to move it a little bit because I moved the engine back into the car so this shaft could stay the same and I sh had not, uh, do not able to do any cutting in this to make it shorter. So this is an original W210 axle from a 420 over a 430 uh, model um, so it will fit perfectly so the the length of this shaft is completely used so this is slide in here of course and it's completely used over the complete length of the how you say that tooth that are on here so um, but it's not completely the same as an W124 so the bearing is not at the right position so I have to uh, get the normal um, holder underneath the car in the tunnel I need to remove it and put it on the right position but in first place I bought this a long time ago already this is the original bearing from a W210 and it completely it does not fit so I measured it it's completely it's it's 30 millimeters exactly the same so I thought maybe I can find an original bearing from a W124 that's also 30 millimeters and I uh, it was pretty easy I don't know why I thought it right away but this is, has a different ball pattern you can see it's different but this is from a normal six cylinder W124 I just typed the first thing that I typed in was a 320 TE and it was completely the same so I'm going to use this one this is an original bearing from a W124 and it will fit the W210 shaft so that's perfect uh, so I got another seal new seal that will go on here it's the mounted with a clamp and then it will slide over here and it will keep the uh, the shaft from uh, it will keep it dry so you don't have any yeah moisture in between that's not needed so keeps it from rusting and some stuff so that's what I'm going to do get this one off put a new bearing on cut the old uh, piece out of the tunnel and replace it so that's the first part second part will be modifying the crankcase ventilation system this piece I will get a light later on but I need to get a pipe in here so I get some vacuum on the inside. That's the second one and then when I have time I will also start on the fuel system. So let's go. <coughs> so new bearing is on. Old one is off. Got the exhaust removed. Because I had a test fit. Fits all pretty good. The only thing I need to in the band in the back I need to do a little bit of modifying I think. Get a little bit more clearance. Also checked the towing hook. Um, it will not fit with the bumper, so I think I'm going to remove the complete part. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to have, have to have a look later into that because I've, if I'm going to use the the bumper that's with this kit, the AMG bumper, I need to cut into it. Otherwise, I cannot hook it in. It will touch the bumper and I don't want to have a uh, coupling that's on there all the time so yeah I think it's also a small chance that I'm going to drive with a trailer behind this car but yeah it was nice to have but it's not perfectly on here so I'm going to remove that 
It also gives the silence a little bit more clearance because this stainless steel exhaust will grow when it heats up. It is now already touching this, so I need to have a little bit more clearance also. Okay, so back to the uh, hook where the bearing is connected. So this bearing is connected on here. So I'm going to uh, remove it. And in the original way, it should go a little bit forward. But it will not, it's not possible because the muffler is in here. So it will be moved a little bit over here. So it's only like five centimeters or something. But yeah, that's the case. So I'm going to hammer it off, hammer all the, the welds off, because I cannot drill out the, the welds. Come to try that because if I have these side plates, I can just clean them off and weld them back onto the body. That's the best. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, yeah, we're gonna start welding. Uh, you will see it in the next clip. So let's go. So, got a connection on a new position. It came from here. It came from here, it's now in here. It's like 10 centimeters. I sealed the seams back up. So you can see it, it came from here. It moved like 10 centimeters, almost nothing. So I just spot welded all around. Let it dry, then the coating can go back on just like the black coating. And it's all done. And then the axle can go in. So, very nice. So, got the undersides for the bearing of the axle in the paint, so it's drying. Now to the crankcase breather. So I already started, I'm already done already. This pipe is normally the intake of the turbo, there's the air filter on it. So, this is like an inductor pipe, so it will, will put vacuum in front of the turbo. Sorry, vacuum in front of the turbo because you have some resistance from the air filter so there is a little slight vacuum in here because of the resistance of the air filter um, then through this pipe it will suck out of the leftover fumes from the engine so normally it will just put a vacuum in the crankcase a little bit of a vacuum and this will be mounted like this then like this you can see this is the outlet the crankcase breather small tube on here it's a vacuum on the intake it's a small uh, yeah how you call it inductor of venturi venturi pipe in here so the air will flow over the top of the pipe and will suck out of the bottom and will then put the chamber in a slight vacuum that is the theory about it that's how it should work so that's it i will mount this back and then show you the end result drive shaft is in place bolts are all torqued down and 12 bolts 8.8 .8, need to be torqued down to 88 newton meters so done center shaft bearing is in place so it, i replaced it from here to here all tight and the axle here is also tightened up. So what a very good thing is to think about is that also renewed this pushing. Um, have a look where it is. Look, there are two markings over here. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a marking here and here. There's also a marking over here. This needs to be in line because it's balanced like that. So the axle is balanced. So if you ever change out a rear piece and you don't change out the front piece, there's a very big chance that you have an unbalanced axle and that you will feel something about that when you drive the car. Also the way around, of course, if you change the front and not the rear. So you need to have a balance. You also can see it here. There are some plates on here, so the axle is balanced. Have a look if there's more. Here is another one, you can see, small plate. And there's another one over here. So this is all, so this is an axle that is matched front and rear. Um, so that's it. So now I'm going to have a look. I'm going to mount the handbrake system over here. I think I, the best way was to do it when the axle was still out of there, but I can still reach it because the points are over here and here. There's another one that's a little bit 
uh, coated. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to mount the center plate. Uh, the center plate is like the heating shield for the for the muffler in the middle. And then we're going to start with the uh, fuel center shaft mounted. All bolts are torqued down. Also the handbrake back in place. Uh, hoses are in place. It's not tensioned, so I have to test it if it's the right tension, but it's completely on the lower setting, so you can adjust it with this bolt. So I can do that later on when it's, everything is back into the car. Heating um, shield is in place, so everything is connected. So the next thing what I wanted to do is installing the fuel pump. Normally it's hanging over on this side. That's, I'm going to place it here because I also have the rest of the fuel system on that side of the car. Um, I'm going to run the uh, the line through the fuel pressure regulator underneath the hood through the car, so it will be somewhere on here, on this side, somewhere over here, and then to the front, and also the return line will go in the car. It will be a half inch fuel line, so that's. A and 10 I think line and connections are over here you got the pressurized line the return line and this is some kind of I don't know where this was for uh, it has to do something with that canister on the front but I looked with a camera in the lines and followed them these are this is coming from straight from the fuel filter I checked it it's all clean um, and this one is going to return into the fuel swirl pot in here. And this one is straight into the tank, there's nothing behind it. Because this is a thick line, a big one, and the return line will be very small, I'm going to use a T-piece that will use both of them as a return. So I have not have any restrictions in the return system of the fuel. So, um, show you the fuel system because I'm going to do a next video about the whole fuel system. I wanted to do it in this video, but I just don't have enough time. And otherwise, the update will be more than a week later than now. So, I already did some stuff. Um, this is a fuel lab fuel pump. It's rated for like 1300 horsepower of fuel. That's just on regular fuel. So now E85 and that sort of stuff, but this pump can also do E85 and E100 I think. I think it's rated for fully alcohol. Um, so very big pump, but it is pulse wide modulated because I don't need that much of flow, but I could use a smaller pump. But these ones were more in stock and the price was the same. So why not use the biggest pump if you can just rate it with a pulse wide modulation and the maxi here I'm going to use it can do that. Fuel filter, um, and then I'm going to hardline into the car. So on this side will be just a socket. Where I, do I have it? This is just a hydraulic connection, and I just use it as a hose pillar to put a hose on. So this will go in here. I think I already had the right fitting on it. Look, this is going in here. Uh, this is normal AN10 thread, I think, but I use the hydraulic connections for it. So this is all steel. Um, the reason I did it is because I think they last longer and it's just, yeah, I have a better feeling about it. So, and when you look at the price, they are not that more, they are not pricier than the others. So this is a very long piece to put underneath the car. I will uh, tighten these a little bit and I can show you where I want to mount it. So, <coughs> it's pretty long, but yeah, that's not, there is not a better way to do it, I think. So, I'm going to hang it over here, and it's pretty long, and it will be somewhere like this. So, in the front it's pretty low, because I have to run the fuel line to the bottom of the car, otherwise you will step on it, because this is also where the rear bench Ends. So it will be somewhere like this. 
So I will make a plate from aluminium on top of it where I can bolt this complete system on and then a plate to the side where I can mount it. So there will be a plate like this, this, like this and the pump and then on the side there will be a plate welded on, screwed in here and here and it will be solid. That is the plan. So I'll put the lights off. So I wanted to do more in this video, but yeah, I don't have. I'm a pretty busy the last weeks. So uh, yeah, next video will be fully on the fuel system, and I can do also the rear pump part and then the connection to the tank and run the lines through the car. And then I have everything in one video, I think that's more clear. And then also put the fuel pressure regulator in the hood. And then uh, return lines and that sort of stuff, I think that's more clear. And I can also explain all the details about the fuel system. Um, to the fuel pressure regulator, all the stuff that I'm using. So I think that's a better idea. So in this video I did the center shaft. One last modification to the body, so that's all done. And I did the uh, breather system connection. And um, yeah, next will be the fuel system. So, hope you like this small update. Thanks for watching, and see you for the next one. Bye bye.